Today's Wednesday, August 3rd, 2016, and you're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It is great to be here after spending a week away from work, elevators, uh... And yes, I was able to unplug myself, if that sounds crazy. Uh, it helps when you don't bring a tool that you actually need to log in and actually be productive when you work. When you're on a phone, that's really not a whole, you can't really do a whole lot on that. But um, but when you have a laptop or something like that, like I typically bring with me, then it's a whole other ball game. So uh, yeah, I didn't bring the laptop. Uh, my wife told me, hey, pack light, let's not check any luggage. So we didn't, took it all on the plane, nice and easy, and uh, headed to sunny California to enjoy the cool, crisp Pacific Ocean in Santa Cruz, and just had a great time. I really enjoyed it out there. I loved sleeping in each, each day, recharging my batteries, and I have to tell you, it was great to spend time with, uh, with family. Um, on a side note, my oldest son... Um, who did not join us on this trip uh, on his, is on his own epic adventure in Alaska for uh, or has been for the last 30 days and uh, he is let's see here I just want to share this because I'm picking him up in about two hours at the airport I'm really excited I haven't seen him in a, in a, in a month he under underwent a, uh, a backpacking adventure in Alaska and uh, I'm really excited to hear about it he is 17 years old and I think a, a great age to do something like that and just can't wait to see him. I mean, uh, you know, whenever you are missing an element from your family, whether it's a child or, or your spouse is on vacation, it is definitely, uh, they are definitely missed. So uh, looking forward to that. But yeah, if you have not made a vacation or planned a vacation or set, sent your vacation dates in, get them in, please. Get them in if you can, because there's nothing that sets uh, or puts things in perspective like being away from work. And being unplugged, not getting bugged every freaking 30 minutes or whatever, and understanding that you have people that you work with that are capable of doing the job or covering for you in your absence. Not that it's necessarily easy, but letting go for that week and, and, and making sure people understand that you are uh, recharging the batteries is also, it's also pretty important. So get that time in. Make sure you don't forget about it. We as Americans, we as people who live in the United States, work our freaking tails off. Uh, hardly taking time off, and if we were to adopt the European standard and take a month off or some type of extended leave where, where most of the country shuts down, I think that'd be awesome if we could somehow adopt that. So uh, get your vacation time in, take time off if you can, and just realize that at the end of the day, these are only elevators, and you want to make sure you go home each and every day to your family. That is my soapbox talk of the day. So this is show number 436. If you're joining us for the very, very first time, i got to get some oil for this chair. Uh, welcome to the program. It's good to have you here. Uh, it's a weekly pod, uh, audio podcast, video, blog, vlog, whatever you want to call it, and we, where we bring some important information to you that we find online each and every week. And we got a good show for you today. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, news will be up next. And as always, go over to the Facebook.com. Um, elevator radio show page like it comment on it if you like and share the stories that we link up during the weeks um, and uh, that seems to be the best way people are are pulling us in it, it's not easy to keep up on everything but that's a good way of doing that so 
All right, up next is news. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. Alrighty, the first news article I want to talk about today is actually kind of a press release, but it's very exciting, and, and uh, I want to do everything I c- can do to help promote this and, and make it a success. Uh, Bob Shepard, executive director of NASA International, uh, sent out a press release talking about the Elevator Safety Summit that is uh, going to be held next May 2017. Um, his initiative in ensuring that uh, everybody, or we can, we can, it, it, that everybody can do their, their part in making sure. Uh, worker fatality prevention, rider safety, and future elevator industry safety programs and initiatives are being met. And uh, I am excited about this. I am excited to be uh, to support it, to be part of it. If you click on the link, the registration is open. There is an agenda. And uh, if you don't know Bob Shepard and his passion, uh, you will uh, um, uh, you will be definitely impressed, uh, as I have been. I encourage you to support the event, whether you're sponsoring it, whether you want to attend it, whether you want to partake in, in the you know educational sessions. I encourage you to do so. Um, it's never too early, uh, and it's never too it's never enough to do your part to ensure that each and every one of us goes home safe and. Uh, you just can't point the finger and say it's uh, you know this is union responsibility or company's r- responsibility. <clears throat> At the end of the day, it's everybody's responsibility, and that's that's how it goes. Whether we're talking about safety or educating or whatever, we all have a part in this, and uh, if we can all do it in a way that uh, ensures that uh, people are not dying or getting hurt on equipment, please just you know do your part. So we'll continue to uh, you know promote this event. It's again in May. Put it down on your calendar and um, it's going it's the first of its kind. And uh, I am looking forward to it and, and again hats off to NACE International for making this a reality. It's going to be held in Phoenix, Arizona, May 21st to 23rd. Click on all the information and the links and uh, we'll have Bob on the show uh, at a later time to promote it. Just talk about it a little bit and uh, Bob's a great guy. Uh, okay, next news article, Elevator Crushes Man to Death in Washington Heights. I cannot remember if I covered this on the last week's program or, or the last program before I went on vacation, but uh, apparently a man was killed when an elevator he was loading quickly ascended and pinned him into uh, to the ceiling. Um, terrible, terrible uh, accident. Obviously, this was updated on 725. Obviously, um, you know, details are still being learned about the accident. Uh, but uh, it doesn't sound as if uh, an unintended, unintended motion uh, detection was installed. I don't know if this was something that was a uh, retroactive requirement in in this area or not, like door restrictors or uh, something else, but still, just it's a terrible tragedy, and, and obviously, uh, uh, I don't think we'll learn a whole lot more about it because it was a worker in a, a work setting. Uh, typically, these are investigated by OSHA, and then, uh, obviously, uh, litigated by uh, uh, families who are, you know, of the deceased. And that's typically how it goes. And it just takes forever. And uh, But just remember, do, do your maintenance and, and make sure elevators are safe. Those that you're working on inspecting, if you see something that's unsafe, red tag it and uh, do your part. Make things safe. Okay, next news article. I thought this was really intriguing. This did not show up in my news aggregator, but it was posted on one of the Facebook pages that I am a member of. Um, for vertical transportation profess- professionals, but I read it. It, it. It's not far from the truth, that it, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, it's 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 not as cut and dry as as what it is stating. CanadianManufacturing.com has an article talking about apparently Canada has an elevator crisis. One expert blames manufacturers, and it's a pretty involved article written by uh, Colin Perkel. Uh, from the Canadian press, and it unfortunately doesn't tell the whole story, but definitely hits on some uh, some topics or some truths uh, regarding equipment that perhaps is not manufactured to last as it once was back in the day, and how cost has become king in terms of trying to generate a profit. And I've seen this uh, in other parts of the United States where literally... You know, you'll have uh, contractors just beating each other up over price, almost just trying to um, try. In, 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 in reality, it's difficult to make money on a maintenance contract that you're getting $60 a month for or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like things have changed so much, um, you know, over the years. But 
and technology has as well. So some of that same equipment may not require the same kind of maintenance that something in 1930 may have may have had. So it's a really good article. I, I encourage you to read it, sure. And um, you know, it's it's not a it's not an issue that is is alone inherently linked to Canada. The United States sees the same kind of thing, and uh, there's some good truths in there. I, I think it's cool, Catherine, uh, um, from the Canadian Elevator Contractors Association is actually quoted in here, Elevator Consultant. Um, but it's an issue whether or not things actually uh, change or not. Uh, it remains to be seen. And uh, until we, you know, until elevator owners understand the importance of uh, quality maintenance and, and what that costs and what equipment costs, um, they're really just looking at the bottom line. Um, and really, at the end of the day, um, you know, should elevators cost? I don't know, $900 an hour uh, for a building owner to pay to, to, uh, is it worth it? You know what I mean? I mean, it's crazy. I, I <laughs> anyway, but it's a whole other soapbox for another day. Um, anyway, read it. Good article. I encourage you to uh, print it out and, and even share it with your clients if you're a contractor. It's a good idea. Okay, down elevators plagued uh, Aurora Condo. Aurora? Or Aura. Man. I'm terrible at pronunciation. Um, and this is an article talking about a bank of six elevators that was damaged when a pipe broke. Come on. Um, it's coming from the star.com. When a pipe broke during an, a storm. And, you know, if if you're looking to retire some someday, I recommend going to retire in a, uh, in a building that doesn't have an elevator. Yes, I said it. <laughs> And even a ranch, a building that or a home that doesn't have a second floor or a first floor. Put it all on the first landing. Let's make life easy for yourself as as movement gets a little more difficult. Um, okay, nine elevators. That's all right. They were all damaged. But, yeah, it's a big, big problem, obviously. And uh, contractors obviously working as hard as they can to get it running. Um, but just gives you an idea of how something catastrophic like that can truly make uh, make a huge, huge problem in a high-rise anywhere in the, in the country, you know what I mean? So, anyway, next article is a press release from Maxton uh, Engineering, Maxton Manufacturing, MaxtonValve.com, I'll say it all. Uh, they have a press release talking about their new electronic elevator control valve launch. It is going to be launched at the Montreal Exposition, September 21st, 2016. I just want to uh, throw this out there. Maxton is one of the companies out there that does a lot of uh, continuing education work. Um, on site at elevator at you know elevator contractor locations stuff like that so go over visit their booth 2022 find out more information about their new electronic uh, valve unit and um, it looks pretty cool so I'll enjoy learning more about what that's what that's all about and uh, press releases in the in the show notes as well okay next news article let's see here Oh, Trump stalled in an elevator. I'm sure many of you saw this, or this came up on your news aggregator. Um, and I'm not going to play the video because it's going to play a pre preload. But he was rescued from a an elevator before a rally when he stuck between the first and second landings. Okay, so there's two issues with this. The, f the first issue was is that so after he was uh, stuck in an elevator, went on uh, and the firefighters helped him out, getting him out. Um, literally, he went up on stage and blasted the elevator fire, state fire marshal, stating that because there's a limit, uh, a capacity limit for people in that room that he was speaking in, um, that uh, he was just slamming the, the state fire marshal because more people couldn't come in and watch him. I mean, it was pretty ridiculous. I couldn't believe <laughs> what he was saying. Uh, and then come to find out later on, the elevator actually was, I guess, I guess his entourage has had an elevator key that allowed them to, I don't, e I don't even see a key in there. I'm assuming it was fire service, to be honest with you, which if it was, that's terrible. Uh, but it looks as if uh, when the elevator started moving from one to two, they used a fire, so they used some kind of elevator key uh, to commandeer it. And all I can say is I have a feeling that it was, um, it was the, the fire service key. <laughs> Idiots, idiots. First time I ever heard of um, a campaign or anything like that um, using elevator keys that they have to commandeer them. I mean, it's one thing if it is our uh, our government, not our government, but you know, just somebody who is actually trained to do that. But another thing if some yahoos that feel that they're that important to um, 
you know, they should have keys to stuff they really shouldn't have keys to. So anyway, so there's the next articles in that. But click on the video. I just, I don't know. I just wish, I wish some of the stuff that didn't come out of his mouth wouldn't come out of his mouth. Or he'd think twice about saying what he's saying. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't even know what else he's saying. <laughs> it's just, oh, man. Anyway, but yeah, next article was uh, campaign staff using no keys. I'm going to get a question mark on that. Okay, next article was a press release from Mitsubishi Electric uh, talking about their launch of the, okay, Nexiezies, N-E-X-I-E-Z dash S elevator lineup, new models for low and mid-rise um, buildings in overseas market. Um, anyway, the marketing piece, you can learn more about that. I don't think it's coming here to the United States or North America, so nothing that we appear to need to worry about um, if we are here. So, okay, next news article. I don't know why I got to keep bouncing back to this main page. I do not get it. Uh, next article. Okay, Chicago Elevator Association golf outing is this Friday. Uh, I believe it is too late to register for it, but if... You beg and plead and call uh, Park Specialists up at uh, 708-371-2444. Um, maybe Tommy Chris Bilo will be able to uh, get you in somewhere. But at the very least, consider attending the um, consider attending the uh, just the dinner because the uh, the raffle's really cool. It's always been cool, and you got a chance to win some really really cool prizes that have been uh, being collected since uh, Black Friday. Um, <laughs> so very cool. Okay, next news article, and I unfortunately will not be able to attend that uh, event. I'd like to, but I just can't. Uh, worker falls to his death in an elevator shaft fall. This occurred in I don't know. I, I thought I did have this. Oh, Seattle. I'm sorry. Um, ComoNews.com. A worker fell uh, and died when he fell down an elevator shaft Sunday morning at a Seattle business. They're not quite sure what happened. Oh. Oh, no. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way down. They don't know what happened. Homicide was called in to investigate. They don't really think there's foul play. However, I don't know why they would necessarily not think or, or call in the homicide detectives if there wasn't. So um, maybe we'll find out more about this later on. I hope we do just so we can kind of do our part to prevent it in the future. So uh, anyway, next news article. Excuse me. Yeah, got the burps. Um Teen rescued from Columbia elevator shaft. This kid is so lucky he's not dead. It's a freight elevator, and apparently this teenager found himself stuck in the elevator shaft. Um, he was stuck on top of an elevator between the ninth and 10th floors. Uh, Authority said two workers were in the elevator going from 4th to the 10th floor when the elevator shut down automatically, and then they heard someone screaming for help. Crews saw that the 17-year-old male was hanging upside down. Unable to move, trapped between the elevator and shaft wall. <sighs> if this is not a reason to, uh, this guy's so lucky. I mean, he should go on tour and be like the safety spokesman for elevator safety, and say, "I what I did was terribly wrong. This is stupid. I could have been killed. Do not try to attempt, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Man. He is so lucky. He should be dead. If you're listening, dude, you should be dead. You might want to think twice about, uh, you know, doing stupid stuff like that. I, I just, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That should have ended, that article should have been written, should have ended in an entirely different way. Okay, next news article, uh, fire engineer. Okay, this is this is the fire engineering perspective. They got some video, uh, not some video, some photographs of the actual um, how the firefighters responded. They used the jaws of life to open up the freight door. <laughs> and then they blocked it up with a bunch of wood. So anyway, um, I am not a member of that, so I can't really read it. But if you want to see if you can do that, check it out. Okay, the ABC new Newspapers, I don't know who that is, uh, is uh, has an article talking about county completing elevator upgrades. Uh, congratulations to Schumacher Elevator, who's been awarded um, some an elevator repair contract, not including major upgrades to the Wargo Nature Center. A price tag of um, $27,630. So that's always nice to see uh, independent companies in the news. So pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Next news article. Let's see. Oh, happy birthday, Elijah Otis. I'm not a big fan of like... Um, how should I say this? I'm not a big fan of wishing people a happy birthday when they're dead. 
<laughs> but, but over at Elevator World Unplugged, um, they've we've got a, a today is Elijah Graves Otis's 205th birthday. If he were still alive, uh, if you want to find out and see what he was all about, click on the Elevator Museum and you can you can do so. Kind of a unique individual, um, you know. And I think I think most people who were um, trailblazers that time had to be kind of unique and odd, you know. And so Elijah Otis was credited for developing the safety brake, which allowed cities everywhere to build upward. And uh, it was that it was that invention that uh, pretty much uh, made him famous. But he had other other cool um, things that were neat. Um, that he accomplished, so I thought it was pretty cool. So happy birthday, Elijah Graves Otis, 205 years old. Um, do you think there'll ever be a time when we're living until we're 205 years old? And then, you know, like in a thousand years, you look back like, oh man, the the life of a human being, you know, of a male in 2014 was like only 80 years old. You know what I mean? Do you think we'll ever get to that point? You might. We might if we... Uh, can replace all of our body parts with with new ones that don't, uh, um, you know, that don't fall apart. So that's pretty good. Um, anyway, oh, next article: Reader sound off on Sanders baseball and elevators. This is the opinion section of Daily uh, Daily News dot com. If you scroll down the page, you'll find the actual elevator section uh, where somebody wrote in saying we should really truly license elevator mechanics in. Uh, the state of New York or in New York City, I forgot which one it is, and that could. And I, I agree with that. I'm not quite sure why a hot dog vendor needs a license, but um, an elevator mechanic uh, doesn't. So I'm, I'm sure it's all political, but uh, there should be qualified people working on the on, on the equipment, you know, no matter what. And um, that's just the bottom bottom line. So, okay, it's kind of some sad news in Disneyland. If you are a, a big fan of uh, Disney World or Disneyland, I think it's a cool. Um, it's a cool place to go, you know, obviously a little expensive. They just suck the money out of your wallet, but kind of a cool place. Uh, if you've been to, um, I think it's Universal, not Universal Studios, one of those where they have the Tower of Terror. Um, well, the one in Disneyland is being converted to a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. And if you want to watch a video on that, click on it. If you can get, if you can get like through watching this, uh, the guy talking has something hanging from his ear. And I could not concentrate on anything else but staring at that thing, uh, because uh, it's creepy. And then all of a sudden he turns his head, and it's one of those like heavy weights that's like dragging his earlobe down to his shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so hopefully we'll see whether or not the um, we'll see whether or not the actual Tower of Terror in Disney World in Florida gets converted. I really hope it doesn't, but maybe it's time for them to do something like that. Um, it's a cool ride if you've ever been on it. It's where the elevator drops completely, and I think Otis was instrumental in uh, kind of creating that. Um, it's terrifying, <laughs> but really cool at the same time. So Anyway, watch the video. Get grossed out. Uh, what happens when an escalator breaks down on the tube in London? Evening Standard reporting that, well, what happens is huge crowds actually pack up uh, trying to get down into the station. Holy cow. I guess escalators are more important than I thought, right? Maybe the, you and I thought. So um, I'm glad nobody was hurt. Thank goodness. And because uh, sometimes that usually, come on, how do I get back? Don't lock me on this page, Evening Standard. Son of a gun. No, good. We're good. All right. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's a little scary. Okay, next article, uh, Risha Hendrick has got a cool, cool, um, uh, shoot. <sighs> it is a recap uh, of um, Chicago with an illustrious history. If you want to listen to the podcast, it's in the link here. Uh, check it out. It's actually just a, re, a rebrand. It was great to have... Um, Elevator World in in June, attending the uh, the fundraiser that the EESF held. It was awesome and uh, just a nice piece, a nice article. It's Chicago has been very instrumental in um, the Midwest in 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 how it's created and molded commerce in the Midwest. And uh, I love our city. Hate going downtown, 
just because of the traffic, but it's a cool city to be part of. It really is. Uh, it is definitely home. So check that out. Link is in the show notes. How to Stop Stupid? I have no idea. I didn't want to link the actual <laughs> the actual title of this, which is Treasure Chest Casino, Accused of Negligence After a Woman Injured on Escalator. And if you read this, and you'll just be sickened as, as sickened as I am. Because a couple is seeking damages, claiming that a casino escalator resulted in injuries to the wife. Uh, apparently, the wife filed, um, they filed suit against Treasure Chest Casino. Um, according to the claim, the plaintiffs were business invitees of the defendant. Uh, when the incident occurred, the, states, uh, the suit states that um, this Mary Rose Christopher was caused injury while in the casino using an escalator due to a man that was sitting on the steps while descending and failed to stand up, causing the plaintiff and several others to fall behind him. So it's the casino's fault that the man sitting on the escalator steps um, was injured. I swear to you, I hate our legal system. I don't think there's anything better, but there are times when I read this and it just drives me absolutely nuts. It just drives me nuts. All I can say is I hope the attorney takes every penny that they get awarded. That's all I can say. Or I hope the insurance company for the casino fights it tooth and nail. Hope they do that. Please fight it. Fight it. Fight it. Fight it. Fight it. Fight it. You don't see that happen too often. But yeah, how to stop stupid, I have no idea. Okay, next article was, uh, I don't even know what this is. Living Circular posted this, which I'm assuming is some kind of, I don't even know what it is. It's a little deceiving. When I read it, I'm like, oh, solar elevator, renewable energy on every floor. I read this, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Until I read I'm like, wait a minute. It's not a solar elevator. It's actually solar panels that were installed on a building. Um, okay. In France, Otis has installed an elevator powered by solar panels on a green building. So the building has solar power on, solar panels on it, which then powers the elevator to run. Another thing I didn't quite understand, or whether or not I don't, it's interesting to see where um, the number of wattage comes, because I think it sounds good. You know, I mean, I think you can pull numbers uh, anywhere and kind of look through stuff, but. Uh, Otis was talking about Gen 2 switch needs only 500 watts to operate, less than a microwave oven. Consumption that contrasts sharply from that of a con conventional elevators, which often use significant amounts of electricity. In fact, during peak usage, they can sometimes represent up to 50% 50, 50 of the total energy consumption of a building. Um, anyway, it's, it's interesting. I'm just not sure exactly what it is. And when you <laughs> click on the uh, the video there somebody speaking French I don't speak French I'm not sure what they what he, what he's saying so interesting I just don't understand it so either I'm not very smart or uh, some marketing guru is just trying to uh, impress me which I am but yet at the, at the same time a little confused next article elevator unplugged has a cool post uh, about elevator you and Boma um, and who wrote this Caleb wrote this love Caleb Caleb hope you're doing well uh, and he's talking about his adventures attending the Elevator U conference in Quincy, Illinois, and then also the Building Owners and Managers Association in National Harbor, Michigan. I mean, Maryland, I'm sorry. Uh, we got some, some cool photos from the Elevator U, con Elevator U conference, along with some cool photos from the BOMA conference as well. So I think that's pretty neat. Kind of neat to see who showed up for BOMA. Um, I know why we had attended a BOMA or specifications show. It just didn't work out very well for us. But, uh, but it's still kind of cool so Caleb thanks for sharing those photos I'm sure we'll learn more about those or read more about those uh, you know in a future issue of Elevator World so well everybody that's going to do it for the show notes and the show for this week show number 436 um, as always feel free to comment over on the Facebook page to find that go to elevatorradioshow.com uh, and there's some kind of <laughs> there's some link there you can click on it or just look it up on Facebook where the heck's that link link's all the way in the bottom here Scroll all the way down. Oh, there it is. Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. We don't really do that, I don't think. And then email. If you want to email us, you can do that as well. And oh, it's also, we got an online store here. I don't even know if it's still working. It is working. Maybe it's not. Let's click on it and see. If you want to get some cool goodies, we've got some elevator radio show goodies. We've got some goodies for consultants. We've got some goodies for contractors, suppliers, mechanics, inspectors. You got it. And just as a reminder, I haven't talked about this in a long time, uh, but 
Um, everything that's sold on the site, I make nothing on. So when you see the price, you go, holy crap, a $29.95 t-shirt? Yeah, I don't make anything on any of this stuff. Everything is marked up $5, okay? $5, just arbitrarily marked everything up 5 bucks. That $5 goes back to the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. And since we started the program, we've raised quite a bit, of, not quite a bit of money. Uh, we've raised enough money to send them a check when we get enough money from the place that makes all this stuff. So, yeah, so if you want to get some goodies, support the ESF while getting, uh, I don't know, getting outfitted with a uh, dog shirt or whatever. Uh, wow, I got all sorts of good stuff here. Button, 104 bucks. No, no, that's not right tank top, all sorts of goodies. Uh, go over and click on that link. It's in the, at the bottom of elevatorradioshow.com. Uh, and that's about it. So I'm going to stop rambling and we'll get you out of here. So again, remember safety. Make sure safety is your number one priority. And uh, have a great week, everybody. And remember, they're just elevators, okay? At the end of the day, it's not open heart surgery. We're not, we're not uh, you know, if it can wait tom until tomorrow, it can wait until tomorrow, okay? So uh, everybody have a great rest of the week. We'll be back next Wednesday and talk to you later.